And here we go. Let's do a run. The smash through the text. This guy gives you the save icon or an item that lets you save the game. Unfortunately, saving this game is not costless, like it's it's not that expensive, but it costs money. It costs 30 coins each time you want to save. There are checkpoints. Um, each time you finish a world, the game consists of eight worlds, and each time you finish off a world and start a new one, like getting warped into the new world in the next world, you get the opportunity to save once for free, like a checkpoint. And you will be asked to save. In a, in a marathon run I would do that, because if anything goes wrong I can start the world completely anew and do not lose that much time, because I would not have to reset the run completely or restart the run from scratch. I can just uh, go and start in the world that I was dying in, in so to speak, and that's uh, pretty nice to have <clears throat> in a marathon. So it's pretty marathon safe this game. In an attempt I would not do that. I would not save anywhere except... No, not... I would not... Except... I would save before the wood golem, because the wood golem is such a... Such a run killer. And I do not want to reset after the wood golem or before the wood golem fight or in the in the at the time when the wood golem fight takes place. I won't, do not want to reset that. So let's kill some soldiers here. These are evil like getting into the plot a little bit. Um, this is Kaylee, the little girl is Kay called Kaylee. Um, her village and her home got raided by Ruber, Sir Ruber, an evil knight, who was trying to um, get the power on Camelot on his side, trying to claim himself rule of, of Camelot and trying to kill King Arthur, actually, uh, which he didn't because um, King Arthur was defended by a guy called Sir Lionel. And it happens to be that Sir Lionel was Kaylee's father, and he died. He died in a battle, and Sir Rupert was could could flee and hide himself for a couple of years, seven years or something like that, or ten years even. I don't know. And now um, he's back. So he uh, built up. He built an army of magically influenced and manipulated soldiers like these guys, these blue little guys here. These are not normal soldiers, these are... I think the these guys have been people or animals or, or things or objects, I don't know. I don't know anymore. And he, with some evil magic, uh, Sir Rupert turned them into soldiers and raided the village because he wants to get a hint or some help to find Excalibur and to get it, to finally get it and claim himself rule of Camelot. Currently, Kaylee, Kaylee could flee in the process, and he, uh, she decided to stay because she has nowhere to go, and she wants to get back and free her mother because Sir Rupert has taken her mother as hostage. To I don't know what he wants to do with her, but he's an evil man, so we have to free our mother. And in the long term, we also have to uh, prevent Sir Rubo getting or finding Excalibur finally and getting too much power and getting too much powerful and ruling the world. So we have to save the world actually, alright. Basically, Camelot, and the world come, would come next. Maybe I don't know. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about. Bear with me. That's not easy because I'm super nervous. Because I um, there's a couple of hours until I have to run this game in a marathon. So I forgot to split. That's stupid. That's pretty stupid. So here we are in the mansion. Uh, the first task we did was uh, finding hens because we wanted to get the sword. 
Um, the sword, of course, is the most... Ex no, not expensive. It's the most important item of the game because it's the one of the one of two items that can deal damage to enemies, and of course, it's the easiest way that to deal damage, and it's the closest thing that comes to a weapon uh, because it actually is a weapon. So we have to find the sword first, then we have to kill all the soldiers as we did, and then we have to learn the first attack, the first super special sword attack, which is the spin attack, like you know, you might know from Zelda. Unfortunately, the mechanics of this game are not the same as Zelda, so the spin attack works a little bit differently. Um, it allows you to spin your sword, but not in a very frantic and high velocity, with a high velocity. Instead, she just uh, do, does one swing, like, pretty slowly, around herself, and in the process when you do that and hit an enemy there is a chance that you drag the enemy closer to you so that your hitbox merges into the enemy's hitbox and you get hit. You just get hit and you cannot knock enemies back with the sword attack or with any attack actually, you cannot knock enemies back with your sword. So that's pretty dangerous and that's why we do not use the spin attack in the run. Maybe someone, one day, someone will find a, a better way to do that, a better way to kill the bosses, maybe with uh, using a special attack. But at the moment, that's just not possible, that's just out of reach. I tried it, I tried different, um, different things with the game, that's an attack that we do not want to see from the ghosts, because we have to wait and it costs a lot of time some seconds. We have to wait for the attack to go off, uh, to go away, to be over, and then yeah, I actually could have just outrun this guy. And here we have to kill all the ghosts, because that's 100%. We have to kill all the ghosts to get access to a secret room in this, or actually not a secret room, but a magically closed, hidden room in this uh, mansion. I would say, I wanted to say castle, but it's not a castle. It's a mansion where Kaylee and her mother used to live. And we have to kill all the ghosts to open up this the door to this room to find additional items that we have to collect because we want to collect everything because that's 100%. That's what we want to do. That's why we have to kill all the ghosts. We have to um, explore this mansion anyway in this fashion because we have to we do not in any percent we do not have to rescue the dog obviously we can skip the shield because we never use it in a run but um, we also have to get the grappling hook like this that's the grappling hook the grappling hook is a very very useful item it has we will use it a couple of times in two different spots in the game so it's required to have to complete the game, you need to have the grappling hook. You also need to have the sword, obviously, and that's actually all that you get in any percent up um, up to this point. Um, now that we killed all the all the ghosts, I think you could refer to them as magicians or mages, but I would say these are ghosts because they look spooky. So, uh, now that we killed all the ghosts, no, that's not the right way. Uh, we can open up this door that I mentioned, like it's this one. We can break it f just with our sword and we can enter the room. That's the secret room. And it contains two items that are required to collect. Like this is the compass, one item that we also would not or will not use in the run. You will not see the item's effect. And we get a heart container. Uh, also, unlike Zelda, the heart container does not replenish your health immediately or automatically. You just have to find hearts to um, refill your health meter. And now we get outside. We want to enter the basement because Sir Ruber is hiding in the basement. We have to defeat him and to um, find our mother. 
And in order to do that, we need to enter the basement. The basement is actually locked. The door to the basement is that uh, hole that you could see behind the screen, greenish man. Uh, the green man is Merlin, and we have to enter this actually open door, but it's not an open door, it's a closed door, obviously we need a key. Now we get sword level 2. That's what we are, um, that's what we came for. We will access this area, this roof area, um, a couple of times, actually five times, in order to gain experience or in order to grind for experience, because we need a certain sword level at certain spots in the game. This uh, sword master that uh, taught us, or that, you know, that taught us the, I'm sorry, this guy that taught us the spin attack is called the sword master, and he is an old friend of our father. He's roaming the world, and uh, on different occasions we meet him, and he teaches us different sword attacks. So that was number one. He teaches us different sword attacks. And for each sword attack, we need to have a certain level, a certain experience with the sword, as he calls as he calls it. So, of course, we need experience points to level up our sword in order to learn certain attacks. And in level 3, or in world 3, it's required to have sword level 3 as well, because there is a, there's a place where the sword master is, um, is located, and he... Um, has to teach us this sword attack, otherwise he would not despawn, and without having him despawn we would not have access to a certain item that we have to collect. That's the problem. And you will see what I mean when once we get there, so now that I now that I think about it, in the marathon that would actually be a good spot or a good place or a good situation for Comments, donations, chat, messages, reading stuff. That was number two. That was number two. And we need to do this five times. Uh, five times means we will get 200 experience points, which is a good basis for the upcoming game. There are more of these enemies um, in other areas, and we will try to kill. Um, as many of them as we can because these enemies give you four experience points each and that's actually that's actually the highest number of experience points that you can get for an enemy kill the bosses in this game do not give you any experience points they actually don't give you anything they just die and you can proceed that's the that's the that's the profit that you can. That's the benefit that you have from defeating enemies, uh, from defeating bosses. But normal enemies give you. That was number three, I think. Normal enemies give you experience points. There are mice and ghosts, like these ghosts in the mansion. They give you one experience point. Um, there are bats, and yes, I think bats. They give you two experience points. Then there are little dragons and spiders, and they give you three experience points. And the soldiers are actually the enemies that um, appear most in most places. Like it's the most common enemy in the game, and they give you four experience points, which, which is neat because we need to grind for experience. Back when I was playing this casually, back when I was a kid, I was uh, thinking about grinding for experience in the mansion because um, I thought the ghosts are a tougher enemy and they came, they appeared later in the game, so they should give you more experience points. I never, I never knew that there is a status screen that you can check and it says how many experience points you need to get. Or maybe I did, but I did something wrong. I did not recognize that the ghosts actually give you only one experience point. Or maybe the other way, other way around, I did not recognize that these guys here, these soldiers, give you four experience points, which is, which lets you level, uh, obviously, a lot faster than killing ghosts. Give me a heart now. I do not need to be at full health when I appear at the boss and when I approach the boss, 
it's not too complicated to kill that guy without getting hit. Maybe not without getting hit, but without losing too much health and without getting too much damage. It's not too difficult, and that was luck. I'm doing a better job in killing ghosts right now, so that's a good thing. Um, so that was number five, I suppose, so we are done here. We have all the experience points that we need up to this point, and we can proceed. Now we have the key, we have the grappling hook, that's, that's a good thing. We need, uh, no, we have the key, now we need to get into the basement, and we need to grab another item there. Another heart refill. I never mentioned that the first item that I that I uh, that I grabbed was a heart refill. Spider, bad spider luck, very bad spider luck. Normally the spider um, hits the wall. He, uh, the spider always walks downwards when you enter the area and when it spawns. And normally when it hits the wall, it will turn left. But sometimes when you have a certain seed. It will turn upwards, obviously, and then you have to wait a little bit, so that's not the best outcome. Maybe it's not the best RNG that we get in the game, but this game is not too RNG heavy. Uh, most of the time RNG actually only involves, or is involved in enemy movement, like enemy movement is completely random in this game. So this is the first boss with a very, with a very uh, chill boss music. And there was, a, there was some kind of glitch happening right now. The, my hitbox and the enemy hitbox was merged. And we, will, we were drawn together. And I, I got stuck in his hitbox. And that's, uh, not a, that's a thing that you do not want to see in bo at bosses. Like, in this boss it's not a too big of a problem. But in later, with later bosses it's uh, too big of a problem. Because it will... Um, because it will give you, it will kill you before you will be ki you will be dead before the the boss actually will be dead. So that's the problem. I hope I have ah, yeah yeah that, that's also RNG. Sometimes normally the the, the snake uh, goes to the goes to the right. No, uh, no to the left. And I took a different path. Maybe that was too slow. Let's see. Now we're on the next world, in the forest. Here we have more soldiers and we kill more, we kill all of them. We try to kill as many of them as we can, as I said. These are uh, these ghosts. Now these soldiers are blocking our way anyway, so we have to kill them in order to proceed. This is Garrett. Garrett uh, just lets us through. We uh, talk to him a little bit and he will let us pass into the forest area. Where he also lives in a house. Oh, sword level three already. Yeah, that's 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 okay. Now we can kill enemies faster, which is nice. I will um, take the opportunity to get into his house. Notice that Garrett never never um, passed us, but now he's here. That's the same guy. He's not willing to help us when we talk to him for the first time. But there's a nice little trick. No, it's not a trick. It's just you are supposed to do that. You are supposed to exit the house, re-enter the house and talk to him again. Because you can only talk to him once uh, until you respawn him by exiting and entering the house. So now he's willing to help us and he gives us access to a cave down below in this area. That contains an item that we have to get. So, But before we do that we will kill this soldier because he's not too far away, too, not too far out of reach. Then we kill this one. We, as I said, we have to kill as many of them as we can. So we want to kill this one and we want to buy something. For the first time, and for the only, that's the only occasion I think in the game, we will buy, uh, we will do something with our money and we buy a shovel. The shovel is required to proceed because you have to dig out not only you can dig out hearts and turnips and little little turnips and you can dig out uh, hearts and money of course you can dig out cash but we do not need 
Act in the moment we do not need hearts and we do also don't need we do not need um, money. So we need to dig out special items that appear on different locations in this area. As you will see, now we have to enter this cave. Like I mentioned, it contains an item that we need to defeat the boss of this world, which is the plant. The most dangerous boss in the whole game. And also a little bit of a run killer. Especially in any percent, because in any percent you do not have a hard refill. Very good spider movement, very, very good spider movement. Sometimes the spider turns to the left, which is not very cool. And now we can grab this stick. This is a magical stick that does not break. Or when it breaks, it uh, reappears in your hand, unbroken, which is very nice. And as I said, we need this item to defeat this area's boss, or this world's boss. Now, off to kill more soldiers before we do anything else. Um, I will also kill this one because I want to have a backup, like four backup experience points, which is neat. Also this one, because it's not, or he's not too far out of reach, again. Uh, also this one, of course. And now comes the new strategy. The new strategy was found by my 10 year old son, actually, which is pretty nice. Um, you ha only have to kill a certain amount of enemies here. Not a certain amount, but you have to kill special enemies in this area. I always thought you have to kill all the enemies in the area, which is not true. You only have to kill the enemies that appear right in front of you, like into your face. And you do not have to go around and search for all the other enemies. You only have to kill them or kill those that are on the way. And you have to access this area like this garden. It's called the garden. It's a garden of this farmer that you could see before. And you have to kill these guys. Then the farmer is kind of relieved and happy enough to give you access to an item that is very crucial in this area, which is this one. That's the large turnip. The large turnip lets you, or gives you access to a horse. You can ride a horse for an unlimited amount of time. As I mentioned before, there are small turnips. And with these small turnips, you can also you can also feed the horse, and you can ride the horse, but just for a limited amount of time, like some seconds, nine seconds, or something. And it's not it's not enough to finish this area, like to get into the next one. You need unlimited access to the horse in order to do that, so we need a large turnip. That's the only reason we need that. Now we kill more soldiers on our way down to the horse. Uh, that's bad movement, because he's now in my way and I have to wait for him to despawn. Also kill this one, also kill these guys down here, because I want to have these backup XP. Ah, he's way off, way off reach. That was a little bit side track. That was a little bit of a sidetrack. Um, this is either pixel perfect or RNG based. Sometimes you can hit this guy right from the right from the top, but sometimes you just can't. I don't know what influences this or what what comes into into play. With this regard. So now we dig up this one. This is also a, this is a hard container. This is also something that we need to get. And we want to fill our yeah, very nice. First try. I want to be at full health because, as I said, the next boss is very very dangerous. Now we can f uh, feed the horse, and the horse is willing to take us with him or with with it. And we can ride the horse. As you can see, riding the horse is not really, it's not faster than walking. But we, unfortunately we have to do that. But that's not the, that's not the main downside of riding the horse. The main downside and the bigger disadvantage is you cannot fight when you are on the horse and you cannot get off the horse and fight. So you are stick to the horse actually forever, right now. You cannot use items. You cannot um, access. You can access the menu, I think, but you cannot equip or use equipped items. You cannot uh, do anything except walking or except moving. That's the only thing that you can do. And we do that 
to get across a bridge that you will see in a couple of seconds, actually. You will... you have to wait for all the enemies to go away. That is pretty tiring and tedious, but you cannot do anything about that. So, now we have to talk to Merlin, for once. Um, and he opens up this path and gives us access to this bridge, and that's something like a wind wind bridge or something. And we only can, or the only way to cross this bridge is with the horse. So that's why we need the horse. And it takes a lot of time to get there. Now we are in the next area, which has dragons. Lots of dragons. They're actually pretty cute, but also very dangerous, because they can spit fire, and they will if I um, not if I mess up and do not kill them in a certain way. They will sp blah, spit fire at me, and this fire, this little fire breath, has a very odd hitbox, like, uh, and it can it can harm you in very very nasty ways. We also get another heart refill. Like this one. Also, I never mentioned that um, you can only have one heart refill at a time. You cannot have more than one at once. So it's nice to have one, but you cannot have unlimited healing power. You can heal yourself only once. And a heart, a heart refill uh, replenishes your health completely for just once, and then it's gone. And. It's good to have that. It's also required for 100%. That's why we get it. So now we um, cross the, or we traverse this little maze here, and that's the only dragon that we kill. Nice little heart that he gave us. Now we can just walk past these ones. If you uh, if you hug the wall for um, for just once, and it gives you the opportunity to walk past these enemies without getting hit. So now we ha head over to the, the plant. First we have to get across or uh, we, get, we have to get past these plants, those little plants. They are nasty. They have a certain cycle and I found this the best solution to cross or to get past them. And now we have to fight the boss which is a very dangerous thing because it's some kind of pixel perfect to put the stick in his mouth or its mouth, and then you have to wait for the root to spawn, and then you have to get the stick back in, and you want to have the three cycle. That's that's not very good. One more pixel, come on. That was actually a pretty good fight, except this one mistake that I had. Actually pretty good. No, I don't want to complain. That was that was pretty good. And we got everything, so we have uh, get another parchment. These little things here are called parchments, and they contain a spell. You have to collect all of them, and they contain a spell that Merlin can use to um, to make Camelot uh, a safe place again after everything is done, after the evil is banished, and everything is good. He can basically he can uh, turn all the all the magically deformed creatures in Camelot, all the creatures that Ruber has deformed and mutated, he can turn them back to normal, which is very nice. <clears throat> and this is uh, obviously required for 100% to get all the parchments. I want to equip the dragon scale. We, we just um, uh, found the dragon scale that lets us jump. And this is the place, or this is the section I got stuck forever when I was a kid. I never got past this world or this area because I could not do the jumping. Because jumping in this game is very, very dangerous and very stupid. Um, you have to be properly aligned, and that's a sentence that, or that's a, that's a phrase that you will hear from me a lot when I play this game. That's the reason we need Sword Level 3, by the way. He teaches us the dart attack. The dart attack is an attack that lets us run, so it's actually pretty nice to have, because running is faster than walking. 
But before we can use that, we have to get all the dragon eggs in this area. And this is the jumping that I always screwed up when I was a kid. I never could do it. Because it's really, really dangerous. As you can see, I have to be... I have to align myself. I cannot just jump. For... Um, because these tiles are placed too far away from each other, I always have to adjust my... to readjust my, move, uh, my position and my jumping in order to not fall down into the water. I see, actually I can run like this. I need to memorize that I can run. So now I can run over here, I can jump over here and I can jump in this cave. And we need to deliver the dragon eggs. Uh, actually we need to find another one and then we have to deliver all the eggs. Also more soldiers, <coughs> which is nice because experience points. We need that experience, by the way. No, I want to kill you. Oh no, I do not want to drown here. No, I don't want to drown here. Which means more experience points. No, they do not respawn. Okay. That was actually pretty dumb. Normally that doesn't happen, but... Today is a special day for me because I... I'm about to run this game on a marathon. Not for the first time, by the way. But... I'm still nervous, like hell. So, okay, that was... No. Uh, if you get hit in this cave, it's not too big of a deal because you get hearts by these enemies. They always spawn hearts or they always drop hearts. That's a special uh, attribute for this. that only accounts for this cave here. We get, an, we get another item, that's a gem. We also have to collect all the gems. Um, there's a rule in this game that or the, these uh, gems, heart containers, gems, and heart refills have, all have a special, uh, all share the same special attribute. They are special items, like they are s called secret items. They are secrets, and if you collect all the secrets in an area, then you get a parchment. That's the requirement. So we have to collect. 100% rules say you have to collect all the secrets, so get all parchments, and you have to. I messed up the quick kill. And he doesn't have a key, okay. Now I'm losing time. Too much time, actually. I have to wait for them to spawn a key, or to drop a key. And with this key I can uh, exit the cave, because for some reason, when once I enter the cave, I cannot leave it anymore. It's locked, and I have to deliver the eggs. And then I have to find the key and I have to take this dragon um, with me in order to get out again. Otherwise I would not be able to get out. So just leave him be because I'm not able to kill this guy fast enough. And we can just run, the dragon will follow us. That's a true a dragon called Devon in Cornwall. He is not able to fly but he soon learn. He'll soon learn. I promise. Okay, we have to get over here. Then we have to mash and we can jump and we can get out of the cave immediately. Which saves the frame or something, I don't know. Now we have to mash. And be careful not to jump, we want to jump over here and not downwards. That's That would be bad, because the stone disappears and then you will die. Now, uh, with the help of the dragon, we can um, cross this bridge because there's a big plant blocking our way and he just uh, stomps over it and it's gone. And now we can access this area. But before we do anything else, we have to go into the secret location here, finding another heart container. Which we need, of course. So, now we collected all the eggs and we go to the next boss. The next boss is, um, if you think about where we are right now, which is uh, something like, I think it's called the Dragon Land or the Dragon Forest or something like that. If you think about that, it's very obvious that we have to kill a dragon. And not only one, we have to kill small dragons. Now we can kill them faster because we have the dot attack. Some will follow us, some will just move randomly, but we have to kill all the dragons that are in our way. Also we have to do that for experience points. Um, the experience points that they give 
are actually worthy or worth to get because it's three experience points each and I have to make sure to outrun this guy and kill that one and please go away, yeah thank you because that's faster then I have to collect this hard refill I uh, actually lost time up there and now we have to get over to the dragon so the boss of this area is obviously a dragon but a larger one actually a pretty big one and we have to kill that guy so sometimes you run into him which does harm only harm to yourself and you have to approach him from a little bit from below and from one side and you have to be lucky to hit him it's not very I don't know how to hit him better how to do it better so that's the only way I can do it it's not a hard boss as you could see so we got everything very nice oh sorry and we get a new parchment and we can access the new or the next area which is another forest and it's here's it's yeah there's snow it's winter it's a different it's a different place um, there's another soldier down there maybe I should kill that guy because of four experience points maybe I should not I don't know it's I doesn't matter uh, this is a carpenter actually he's also disguised as a farmer every NPC in this game is a farmer or looks like a farmer but he's a carpenter and we need this carpenter to give him uh, to give us uh, to build us a sled because there is a hill and we have to get down this hill unharmed and therefore we need a sled obviously um, but in order to do that he needs wood uh, to build one and he needs a lot of wood like he needs uh, he actually needs three complete trees the wood of three trees uh, no six trees uh, three of them we already um, we already cut and we need to cut uh, three more and we have to uh, move around this little maze the only thing or the only way you can do it fast is by spamming the dart attack a lot and it's not too easy the dart attack is executed by pressing the direction one direction twice it doesn't matter which direction and then you hold the direction you want you can hold the direction or you can press the direction you want to run in um, and you can press and you press the B button or the, the sword button so to speak you can also um, place the sword on the A button but I um, used to the B button as a sword button so that's to it that's that's that and sometimes you see me slashing in into thin air that means I messed up using the sword attack, uh, the dart attack. So 113, that's not too bad. The time of 113 is not too bad. In the world record, I got 116, I think. Um, I executed the, I was my execution of the dart attack was a little bit just better. Uh, now we can uh, use the sled to cross this hill down there. Riding the sled is pretty, pretty stupid and dangerous. You cannot slow it down, you cannot speed it up, and you have to avoid getting hit by the trees. Do not... Yeah, that was, that was a little bit stupid. Um, I do not have a fixed pattern on how I do it. I do it uh, a little bit from like I feel, you know. I do not have a fixed pattern. I, I do not have that much muscle, muscle memory for doing that part. But it went well. Only one hit, that's not too bad. So now I have to avoid getting hit by the mice and I have to do a little quiz. Which is fun because it's always the same questions. It's a pool of questions and I have to answer them. Um, Devon and Cornwall, Juliana, the king is an advisor, Merlin, jump and create the dragon scale. Everything is, everything was answered correctly. I get, if I answer every question correctly, if I got everything right, I get another hot container and then I can access the next area. Which is the wizard's lair. Now we are approaching a new enemy, a different enemy. It's called the wizard. 
called the magician, I don't know. I think it's called the magician. Uh, I say the wizard, doesn't matter. Um, and in this cave we have bats. Bats give two experience points each and it's actually required to kill some of them. Not too many, but some of them. And they are in our way either. Uh, either way they are blocking us from reaching the... Okay, got a heart back, very nice. I wanted that heart because I want to get, be at full health when I approach the boss. That would be nice. That would be very nice. And as you can see, the new strat actually saves a lot of time. I'm so much ahead. How did I do that? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, yeah, go away. And also running in this uh, cave gives you a lot of speed. Or it speeds up a lot. A lot of movement is sped up by just run, being able to run, which is very nice to have in the rest of, for the rest of the game. And another benefit of using the start attack is you um, kill enemies much faster because most of the enemies you will kill in one hit. Uh, I could just leave this. Okay, I just leave that one alone because I want to save time a little bit. Kill that one, of course. Then I kill this one, and then I enter the cave. This cave contains a gem. We need to collect those, as I said before. And now I can proceed. Also, these little maps or scrolls that I collected in this cave, uh, if you wonder what that is, these are these are scrolls that contain a hint to a puzzle that appears at the end of the cave. I should have got that hard. Um, there's a riddle at the end, a little puzzle. And the solution to this puzzle is, is written down on these scrolls. And you need to bring them to Merlin to, um, to read them, to translate them and to give you, um, or to tell you the solution to the puzzle. Which is nice, but we do not need that. We already know the puzzle, or we already know the solution, because it's always the same, and unfortunately we need to collect these maps anyway. So we cannot get around that, we cannot speed that up. We have to collect these things, and then we have to... We do not have to talk to Merlin. Oh no, that was, that was a mistake. I did not want to get back, I just wanted to kill the bat. Now the bat is, is right here, I can't just do that, okay. That was right, that was not wrong. I don't know. As I said, this is the riddle, and it's always the same, and I messed up. I completely messed up this riddle. Very stupid, okay. That was pretty stupid. I lost time here. Why did I lose time here? It's not even that difficult. I don't care. Uh, now we have to face the magician. This is, uh, by the way, this is Gilly the Goldfish. And the little goldfish is turned uh, is some somebody who's turned into a goldfish, obviously. And now we have to kill the magician. I have to, I want to stun lock him a little bit, which doesn't work for some reasons. For some reason, it doesn't work. Okay, now I now I got him. He always hits you uh, one time when he dies. He always shoots one more time and always hits you, which is not very nice. And we got him. Okay. Now we get, we've got everything, we can get the parchment and get the hell out of here. And lost a little bit of time here. Next world, no. next world, new luck, new world, new luck. We want to equip the shovel because we need the shovel in this area, again. We have to be very careful not to run into snakes because they are, um, of course they hit you, that's bad, but um, the hit animation or the attack takes a lot of time. 
they wrap you and do not let you go until some until you press buttons frantically and try to get free. Try to get yeah. Try to get free again. And is yeah, that's a very slow process. Also, I want to kill this snake because it's just lying there, running around. And I want to dig up this flute. This is a magical flute. Normally, you are supposed to dig out maps or scrolls in this in this area. Uh, I think there are seven of them, or six or seven of them, and they give you hints like go three steps to the north and go um, seven steps to the west, and then uh, in between two trees you will find the next one or something, and then you find the next one there, and then you have to go from one to the other and from one hint to the next. And finally, it will lead you to the magical flute. But the magical flute is always located at the same spot. So if you know the path, or if you know the spot, you can just dig it out and be good to go. Now this flute, um, we take this flute and we give it to this bird. And this bird gives us the lead bracelet. Because in this area, to proceed, we have to cross a, a small tunnel or a small not hallway but a small kind of a tunnel and we okay um, we have to we have to be we could actually use the horse but we do not have the horse anymore so um, the game gives us the lead bracelet that leads us that makes us heavier and of course I have to equip it that's a stupid mistake as well I have to equip the lead bracelet in order to be heavy enough to cross this wind barrier. And then I am good to go. Killing all the snakes here in this area, which is a good thing because they are in the way, because we want to have free movement, like we have to um, access this cave. We um, are supposed to not step on, this, uh, on these bones, because when you step on a bone, it kind of rattles, and uh, you do not hear that. You do not get a hint what happened, but the door just closes or the gate just uh, will be shut again. So that's not very nice. And, oh my god. Stop that. Oh, I do not want to refill my hearts. I want to save time. I still have to get this heart refill here. And then we have... we head to the next section. Um, what actually happened is that the griffin, Sir Rubus Griffin, he has a griffin, and this griffin stole Excalibur. And with that, with that we are supposed to find this golem, ogre, this ogre. And no, that's completely, that's completely off. Uh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, the Griffin stole Excalibur, but Merlin has uh, Merlin has um, also a bird. I forgot his name, and Aiden or something. And this bird attacked the Griffin, and the Griffin lost the Excalibur in the process, and it fell into the woods. And an ogre found it and took it into his cave. Took it with him into his cave. So this is the ogre. It's the ogre cave. We have to find Excalibur again. We have to get it back from the ogre. And the ogre is actually a pretty smart guy. He's not just tough. He's actually pretty smart. So he um, he built up these traps or these riddles and the stone puzzles. Uh, before you can enter his cave, you have to solve these stone puzzles. And that's what we do now, like playing a little soccer ban, because we. Do not have anything else to do. Obviously. And we have to place the boulders on these uh, grey spots there in order to open up the gate to the next area or to the next room. There are seven rooms uh, of boulder pushing until we reach uh, a cave where Merlin says well done and gives us a snork and gives us an item that is called a snorkel which is required to get to the ogre because there's water and Kaylee for some reason cannot just swim there she needs a snorkel to swim there otherwise she would drown 
obviously. And yeah, that's why we need the snorkel. And any percent, that's uh, the only thing that we need from this cave. But in 100%, we have to do three additional rooms. Merlin asks us if we want to do additional rooms, and we say yes. And then we can do three additional rooms that are quite a bit harder, I think, as these ones. And then we can uh, find another hard container, which is the special treasure that the ogre hides in his cave, sealed by ten boulder pushing room rooms. Yeah, that's what he does. And that's what we are about to do. All in all, this boulder pushing area, all this boulder pushing stuff, takes I think about ten minutes or something, and then it's done and we can proceed. It's a little bit boring but we cannot do anything. Also if you if you wonder why I do not run, I cannot because I cannot access the buttons. I cannot access the I even cannot access the pause menu. If you press start, because there's an opportunity to mess up these rooms like uh, pushing a boulder onto a wall and get do not getting it back and yeah, doing some mistakes in this room. In these rooms uh, you have to reset them, you, have an, you need to have a chance or a mechanism to reset the rooms, to undo stuff, and the only way to do that is to press the start button. The start button completely resets the room and your position and you can start anew, completely uh, from scratch, the room you are in from scratch. And yeah, pressing the start button is also, also gives you access to the pause menu or the inventory. So that's not possible here. You cannot press start in this in this area. You also cannot save because you cannot even use your items. You cannot use any items. And because the sword is an item, you cannot use the sword as well. So that's why you cannot run. You do not have access to the sword and that's why you cannot run. Because you would need to um, press the B button and use the sword because using the sword executes activates the dart attack and you cannot just do that. You cannot use the sword. And that's why we have to do that all without running and without being fast. Now I want to... Yeah, also the these rooms are... Maybe they look a little bit difficult sometimes, but once you get the idea and once you know how to do them, it's actually pretty easy to memorize that. Like you get a feeling for how to do that. This room, a very good solution for this room is to push everything to the left before doing the right side, filling the right side and then you do, you fill up the middle one. That's a very good that's a very good way to do this, I think. Because otherwise you can come into a situation where you are blocking your own way up in the target room here. Also, I do not think that I have completely optimized the movement and in these rooms, but I think I... I think I'm not doing too bad, so... I think that's also a good... Uh, a good situation where we can put some... donations and stuff in once we do the run the marathon run. I'm pretty nervous right now. I'm super nervous. And on top of that, it's in the middle of the night for me, because time zones. Which is strange, but doesn't matter too much. So this is a place, or this is a part of the game where you can let your muscle memory play for yourself, uh, for itself. You don't have to think about... There's only one room I have to think about all the time because I, I actually cannot memorize the solution. I cannot memorize just one solution and do that all the time. 
I always have to remember and I always have to think uh, and make up my mind about the solution. That's weird. It's actually a pretty easy room, but I always get confused by the opportunities and possibilities to solve that. Because there are more than one possible solutions. And it makes me confused. I don't know. That's just weird. Hope I can do that this time. So, nothing really exciting happening right now. <laughs> Which means I can talk a little bit about the game. The game itself was uh, developed and released and published by Titus, which is a company that is very well known for titles like Titus the Fox and Superman 64, I believe, and also Chasm Aside. This game is not too bad, um, except the other ones. No, Titus the Fox is actually not too bad as well, I think. I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway. This game is not too bad. You could say it's a bad game because of uh, the game mechanics are a little bit, a little bit awkward. Sometimes, like the fighting um, is strange and everything is a little bit, is a little bit strange. It feels a little bit awkward and weird. But <clears throat> all in all, it's a pretty solid. It's a pretty solid game because you have to do stuff like this. You have to fight enemies. You have to fight bosses. You have to do stuff like this. You have to do so many different things and you will see a lot more of them uh, once the run is finished. You will have seen lots of things, different things that I have to do in this game. And uh, now we got the snorkel. Also the snorkel is an item like the lead bracelet. You have to equip it right away, otherwise you forget. And when you forget, something strange happens or difficult happens. So if you approach Merlin, you have to mesh with a certain button uh, because he asks you if you want to do additional rooms, yes or no. If you in the 100% run you have to answer yes, in any percent you have to answer no, obviously. You do not want that hard container uh, and you do not want to do additional stuff because you want to go fast and it's not required to finish the game. The snorkel however is required, you cannot skip that. And these rooms, these three additional rooms are not required, but I do them anyway. I have to do them in 100%, obviously, so that's why we do that. And after that, we have to fight the Ogre, which is the first boss who has a very, 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 very high amount of HP. Or a high defense, I don't know. Uh, you hit him a thousand, thousands of times and he will lose a little bit of he will take a little just a little bit of damage and you have to do this very very often you have to hit him very very often there's a slight mistake not not too bad but a little bit strange and yeah that's the problem He's the first boss who has this ability or has this attribute to have lots of health. There are other bosses who has who have that, but we have to do this. We have to do this. We have to do this. Then we have to do this. This. And then we can go. Well, that, is, that was a very good solution. That was that was. I think that was the fastest solution for this room. Maybe not the fastest, but one of the best I have ever done. <laughs> so now we have to oh, go all the way up here, and then we have to pull it, uh, push it back down. Also, this one down there. Come on, one more, one more. And this one down as well. Then we have to push this one in here, this one back up. Also here in this room maybe there's a better solution and a faster one, but I always do it this way and it kind of works. So, And I can memorize it. I can always remember the pattern, so that's because it's very easy to memorize. 
And that's why I do it all the time. And all, all the time I do it this way. So this is the hot container, this is our... This is the benefit and the profit you get from doing these additional rooms. Which is nice to have that. Now we are three hearts short, which is ho hopefully not a problem. Because now we have to face the boss. So, done with boulder pushing, we are back. We can run again and we have to be very careful not to get hit by a mouse. And we uh, just messed up. Maybe I have to use a heart refill here, because the ogre... Occasionally the ogre hits you. I want to uh, push him to the wall in order to stun lock him and um, like you as you can see uh, he has lots of health and he's not willing to die that quickly. Now I managed to stun lock him without getting some kind of recoil. Normally you get recoil when you hit enemies or bosses and if you manage to run into an enemy with a dart attack and start attacking when the enemy is in its uh, iframes, then you can avoid the recoil. That's a nice little game mechanic that I found out. That was a pretty good fight so far. Not very nice. It was a little bit, uh, was a little bit strange in between or in the beginning, but in the end it turned out pretty well. And we got everything, got the parchment, have to take the parchment, oh that's wrong, so okay. And we are done here. Next area. This is the most important area of the game, um, when it comes down to how the game will, how the game will end, or how the game will behave until the end. This is a very very special world that has a very special enemy that you will see in a couple of seconds and I want to kill you, I wanted to kill you actually do not touch this thing, do kill all the enemies and then we have to take this enemy with us down this is the wood golem, that's the most important enemy in the game because he has some nice little, not nice, he has a very mean mechanic on his side, he has a very strange ability um, as soon as you get hit by the wood golem. The wood golem is the only enemy that takes two hearts from you when you when, you hit, when it hits you. And other enemies always take one heart from you and this one takes two hearts from you. You have to trap him inside this arena and then you have to kill bushes because these bushes are the source of his power and as soon as you got rid of them all you can kill the wood golem as well. Got the heart back, very nice. Um, yeah, um, that's what we do now. We kill all the bushes in order to be able to kill him. Because now he's actually invulnerable. And the game designers kind of expected you to get hit by him, I think. Because as soon as you get hit by him, you lose two, two hearts. Uh, you take two hearts of damage, as I said. And another mechanic is, is, as soon as you get hit by him, you will lose uh, two hearts of damage, you will take two hearts of damage from all the upcoming enemies in the game, which is pretty not, uh, pretty bad. And it makes the end game a lot, lot harder than it should be. Because when you, uh, try, when you manage to avoid getting hit by him, so if you do not get hit by him, if you do not lose two hearts, these two hearts of damage, do not take this damage, uh, then the end game is a lot easier because you take only one heart of damage from all the other enemies and also bosses and yeah all the enemies that appear in the end game so that's pretty nice and that's also the reason why I do not want the run to be dead right here and that's why I save here even though I'm losing time by saving the game I will just do that because I want to finish the run because it's a practice run And I want to hit him very, very carefully. Like, his hitbox is also a little bit strange. You have to hit him at the right time to push him back. Otherwise, his face has a, light, a slightly wider hitbox than his body. And so, when you run into him, you could also kill him with, I think, four dot attacks or something. And 
that would be very nice because it would be very fast. But the downside is um, running into him is really, really dangerous because of his stupid hitbox. And there's a very high chance that he just hits you right in the face and you will just lose these two hearts and the end game will be pretty much over. The run will be pretty much over. Oh, that's a snake and I got hit by a snake. I do not want to kill that snake, that's why I want to take it slow. Uh, save Camelot. Uh, this is the reason why we uh, have to need to have sword level 4. I was just uh, validating the run by executing this new attack that we just learned, which is the lunge attack, so-called lunge attack. And sometimes you can kill this mount. That was awkward. I could have died now. I could have died now. I didn't. Uh, luckily I didn't. Because I could kill the mouse before I died myself, which is nice. Now I have to collect an orange and an apple. And I got sword level 4 and I learned the last sword attack, which is pretty nice. And the only thing I have to do with this left is to take that apple and the gem. And then I'm good to go to the next section. I also decide to not heal, I think. Hopefully I do not mess up the next section. For the next section I do not need that much health. Um, now I got everything, I give the orange and the apple, I give to Devon and Cornwall, and now they are powerful enough to be able to fly. That's... I think that's supposed to teach us that eating vegetables is important. Okay. The only uh, dangerous thing dangerous thing in this area is that I, there are bats and they appear on random locations and sometimes from behind. They get you from behind, which is a little bit stupid. I could also take it easy and fly on one side of the, of the screen without having to um, going back and going back and forth and going right and left all the time. But I want to get some parts maybe. But it's not really necessary to be at full health, like I said. Um, we have to cycle... Um, that's an auto-scroller. Obviously it's an auto-scroller and we have to cycle over this map. We have to cycle this map, we have to fly over this area four times until the boss appears. And the boss will be uh, the so-called Chimera. Which is the easiest boss in video game history, in my opinion. And you will see... And soon you will see why that is. So, one more time, I think. One more cycle. So, that ends... Yeah, that's... I think that's cycle number four. And as you can see, the bats also reappear on the locations they had been spawned before. But now we are good to go. I cannot get any faster. There are two, two speeds that you can have. There's a slow slow flying speed and a fast flying speed, a flying speed, and I always take the fast one, of course, and you cannot get any faster. This is the easiest boss, because you always have to stick to that pattern. You are not required to do anything else. Just fly from uh, left to right and vice versa, and keep attacking. This boss can attack you if you do not follow this pattern. It just flies at you and bites you in the face, but if you stick to the pattern and do not do anything else, then you are good to go. Everyone can kill this boss, because it's that easy. And we are done! Killed the Chimera, being back in Merlin's house, and now we are on our way to Camelot. Now we, um, Sir Ruber, by the way, has managed to get the Excalibur. We could not rescue Excalibur from the Ogre, we could not take it. Sir Ruber was a little bit faster. And he's always one step ahead of us. So now we are heading into Camelot and try to end this madness once and for all. And now we are outside of the castle, we have to get into the castle. Unfortunately, the castle is locked. There's a big door, and we cannot enter the castle 
that easily. This guy uh, is required. That's uh, called. He's called the X Beak. That's a magically transformed, I think, chicken with an X. Uh, got transmuted into this kind of thing. And we have to talk to him. He tells us that he is hungry. He wants to have some magical seeds, which is this item that we just grabbed. Um, this guy gives us magical seeds and wants us to find his pet, which is a magical insect. So, and then he is willing to help us getting into the castle. So that's what we need to do. So we give these magical seeds to the blade beak. You actually have to equip these items in order to give them to NPCs. And now he's following us. And I want to say a warm welcome to the worst AI in video game history. Um, as you can see, he's just following us. And, but he's on his... He, he's kind of having his own idea of how follow, what following means and what being useful really means. He has to... Yeah. He has to... He has to pull down these walls for us these wall tiles and now he has to follow us again because it's 100% we have to do something else here not only do we have to find the magical insect which we just did we also have to find a key that we need inside the castle because there is a kind of a key maze and a key a puzzle and we have to find a magical or a gem just a gem that's what we need to do and for that we have to get him down there. That's actually a heart I want to get. Come on, follow me. Um, we want to take him down to the other side of the castle because there, that's the spot where the gem and the key is located. There is one... there might be a chance to do this a little bit faster by just getting him uh, over the other side of the wall but I tried I once tried that for the first time in my first 100% run I tried that and I decided to not do that again because it's really weird for some reason the blade beak is not able to hit walls when he's facing downwards but sideways he's a lot faster in doing that so like you can see like you could see he, do, he does it immediately when he faces a wall and there's also a way up there that you can access from the top of the wall, uh, which is just not possible because the blade beak uh, does not really behave and he does not really act that way as he would be supposed to, to do. There's a video on my YouTube channel, by the way, if you want to see how stupid that is and how long it takes to take him down there. Uh, there's, uh, yeah, there's a video on my YouTube channel. And that's why I call him the worst video game AI in history, or the worst AI in video game history, the other way around. So now we have to take this insect, give, to, give it to the man, and as it turns out, this man is not willing to help us because it's an evil magician and he just throws us into the dungeon. Sadly, the game is uh, might be over, but uh, we are very clever and we are able to dig out a key here at this spot. You actually uh, really have to dig uh, out all the patches, all the tiles, in order for the key to appear. It uh, always appears on the last tile. So that's not just a mistake, that was intentional. And now we take the last heart container and the game and need to find another one who might be able to help us getting into the castle. And also the evil magician took our sword and we need to get it back. We need to get our stuff back, which we will do. Also, I cannot run because I do not have the sword anymore. But this guy is, is a farmer and also he's a blacksmith. And he is giving us back our stuff and also giving us the key to the castle. Now we can access or enter the castle. We have everything that we need to face the next boss. But before we do that, or before we can do that, we need to solve a little... A little puzzle, as I mentioned before, there's a key puzzle inside of these walls, which is here. Also, the magical insect was actually uh, an ingredient for a magical potion that allows Rubus' army to move uh, a lot faster. 
Also, I want to equip. Can you please give me the menu? Thank you. I want to equip the slingshot here. It takes a little bit of time to do that because menuing and stuff, but I really want to have the slingshot because it makes uh, life a little bit easier on these walls, inside these walls. I'm losing so much health. I'm so bad right now. Because these guys are running around like crazy here. That was not necessary, and it was a heart. I could have just waited for the heart to spawn. Ugh, stupid me. Sometimes you can hit this guy, sometimes you just cannot. And I messed up completely. I messed up. I want to I, I want to use the slingshot um, to hit this guy before he approaches me. But this time it was not. I was not possible. I, I was just not able to do that. Okay. Doesn't matter. We take this key back to the other area. I think... Oh, maybe I did it. Maybe I messed up right now. Yes, I messed up. I'm losing time, I'm so sorry. I messed up, I did a mistake. Uh, of course, that was not the right solution. Normally I do know the pattern, but this time... Okay, it was this way. Okay, I need to do... I need to be careful now, because I do not want to lose too many hearts here. Oh, I'm sorry, that was stupid. Um, now I know where I have to go, I think. Okay, I have to go this way. All the way down. Back to the ghosts. Also, if ghosts have been scary, the fast-running ghosts are even, even more scary, I think. But you can hit, uh, you can kill them because you have sword level four at this point. You can kill them very easily with just um, one dart attack, which is nice. Uh, now I have to go this way. Very careful. That was close. Have to get this key, and we can get another one right from here, right. Right next to that uh, key is this key. That's the next one, and now we have to get back to the soldiers. Also, I do not—I actually do not need to kill any more enemies because sword level four is is enough. It's we do not need any more sword levels or any more experience points. But actually, want to have some hearts? That would be nice, but not today. Opening the store, waiting for him to run around, run down. Going over here, um, killing this one. No hearts, my, 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 my. That, that's not good. But I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm good. It's just, um, I just will lose some time because I might have to heal in the next boss fight. But it's not too bad. I can get a hard refill right in the boss arena, the next arena. There is a hard refill. Um, conveniently placed right there, where you fight the boss. And I still have another hard refill from before, so that's not too bad. Kill that one. Got a heart, very nice, not too bad. Now we grab the last key, the last one, and then we can access the boss arena, the next boss fight, and kill the next boss. I hope for another for another heart, but not this time. Now we are done with ghosts and soldiers and finding keys. We have everything we need in order to yeah, fight the next boss, which is located over here. And this door opens... just opens with the right key, like this one. So the next boss is the Griffin, that stole Excalibur before, and the Griffin fight can be... he can be kind of a troll sometimes, but normally he will just... Um, you can just make him go into this corner, 
can push him into this corner and then you can just fight him over here. Unfortunately I have a little bit of a recoil here, I have to adjust, but I do not want to do the trick because I do not want him to break free from this corner. This corner is a very good spot because uh, he cannot break free so easily. Normally he faces uh, different directions, taking some steps and then he approaches you right away. So when he approaches me I just push him back with the sword because I hit him all the time. Also he cannot just go downwards uh, and a little bit to the right, there's a skull blocking his way. And that was a good fight. That was a pretty good fight. And this is how you kill bosses in Quest for Camelot. Normally. And now I open up this cave and I get back to Merlin and I hopefully have collected all the things. I think so. I placed a little bit off here. Okay, my placement was a little bit off. Okay, now we're done. That was a good Griffin fight. And stun locking him there in this corner, that's actually the best and easiest way to kill him. So, I always do that. So now we have to equip the lead bracelet again. Because as Kaylee states here, there's a strong wind, you can feel a strong wind, and when there's wind we have to be heavier than everyone else to get through the wind, like we did before in the game. So now you have to remember that and you have to do that. You have to equip the lead bracelet in order to get down here. No. That was a uh, hitbox merging at its best, again. Killing these, mal uh, these mice. Now we have a nice little stone puzzle again. Hopefully I do not mess up this time. Yes, I did. I did it well. Everything is fine. Now I equip the slingshot again because I have to deal with uh, enemies that I have to kill. Especially mice. I do want to wait for them until they are properly aligned. May um, the best thing for them to be aligned is um, when they are running around the at the walls of a, of a room. That was, that was stupid. So now I have to deal with bats. Sometimes you can hit this thing with the slingshot, sometimes you cannot, because I was not properly aligned. So yeah, as you can see, alignment in this game is very crucial. Everything comes down to your alignment and enemy alignment and positioning and all that stuff. Sometimes the slingshot deals the same amount of damage as the um, dot attack does. I actually want to get that hard. Um, sometimes it just doesn't. And that was not pretty bad. That was not too bad. Not super fast, but also not too bad. And I'm, f I'm good with my health. And now I have to do another jumping section, which is the most favorite part of everyone playing this game. Jumping sections are so much fun. In this area you have to be very careful to be aligned like slightly above this middle line on these planks. And if you do not align yourself properly you will just fall down because you will jump too far. That was not too bad. Actually I want to get that heart, because hearts are always a good thing. Uh, the lunge attack is... I think it's it has the same strength as the dot attack. So I could kill this bat with one shot. Getting a heart back, very nice. This guy is dangerous because sometimes he just um, runs back up, upwards, and then you are not properly aligned to hit him. I'm doing no, not too bad here right now. Very nice. And I could have grabbed the heart, but it's not too... it's not too bad. It's not necessary, I think. Now I approach the next boss, and that's the second last boss we have to, we have to face. This is the min super minion, and we always have to wait for him to crouch, and then we can hit him with... Uh, the dot attack, I think, is the best solution, because it takes away a little bit of health, more than normal slash, 
but I, I'm not sure if it really takes away more than a normal slash. But it's faster, you can just run into him at the right time. And you have to take it very slow here. So it's it's actually, it could be very relaxing, but the problem is, and the pressure is, you have to do it a lot of times. As you can see, his health does not go down that quickly. Um, sometimes you do not even see it going down when I hit him. He has so much health and such a high defense that this is just not visible sometimes. And you also have to be very patient. You always have to wait for him to crouch or to begin his crouch. Uh, otherwise you would not hit him, but you would um, push him away from you and he would start to follow you. And when he follows you, he can do a, it's a kind of jump attack. He can jump at you and hit you. And this can lead um, into some weird case of hitbox merging. Like you can merge your hitbox into his hitbox and this is pretty much it means death. It just means death, and it just means the run is over. That happened yesterday, uh, two days ago, with a very good pace and a 100% run. I was about to get the sub 130, and guess what? The super minion killed me because I was not properly aligned, and I was hitting him from a top, from the top, with a normal slash, and that was just. It was just weird. It was just some case of hitbox merging from at its best, and it was just, it was just stupid. <sighs> I do not think that this is going to be sub 130. I don't think so. Let's hope for the best. So, upcoming boss fight, last boss in the game. Of course it's a Ruber, we have to uh, finish him off once and for all in this arena, which is um, the place where Excalibur was uh, stuck inside of the stone and I have to do this pattern here. I have to uh, push him back with the sword against the wall and then I have to take some steps back and then I have to approach him again and uh, repeat this process. Otherwise, you cannot. Uh, the, the reason is you cannot just stun lock him like all the other bosses. He can break free because he sometimes he has um, his iframes are longer or shorter, and then uh, when they stop, he's some kind of he's kind of uh, invincible, and you cannot hit him and you cannot push him back again, and he starts to uh, jump at you, which is pretty bad because you uh, because the rhythm is just. Uh, broken uh, and now he's doing his little spin attack he learned a new attack right now which is a spin attack and he does he does that uh, to show me how his power sometimes he doesn't do it if you are too close to him he does start this attack sometimes he doesn't it's weird and now we have to repeat this process again he has a new health bar uh, he learned this attack and he got a new health bar to spice up this fight a little bit I think and we have to do it all again and then we have to do something special, as you will see, in order to f really finish him off. Because you cannot just defeat him. He's some. He, he merged himself with Excalibur. When you follow the plot, you will know that um, he uh, his arm and Excalibur kind of merged together. And now he's super powerful. And now we got a new health bar, which we cannot deplenish. We cannot just hit him and kill him. And we have to make him follow us very slowly. Very, very slowly. Come on, can you please... And he has to stick his sword into the stone. Uh, he has to stick Excalibur back into the stone. And this uh, just kills him. And we are done. Pretty much. Wow, super, super cool. That's the one, uh, that's the sub 130. Wow, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> okay, got a new world record. That was uh, the last, I think that was the last one, the last run I do as practice before NGA and it's a new world record. Wow, nice. Pretty much cool. Oh my god. This was supposed to happen yesterday, uh, two days ago, but 
the super minion killed me, as I, as I mentioned. This time everything went well, and I want to wait for the... I want to wait for the status screen to reappear. And we get the good ending, and the best ending, actually. Any percent you get a different ending. I think it stops right before the fireworks. It gives you some pictures, and he gives you... The last picture it gives you is that Kaylee and her mother, Juliana, are... are um, yeah. Finding each other again, being happy again, and... Uh, her mother is rescued and she's unharmed and everything is fine. Uh, but this time, when you do all the parchments, uh, Merlin is able to. Merlin is actually able to. Um, yeah, to restore Camelot to its to peace and glory as it was before. Kind of. So that's it. That's it. <gasps> wow, Josh, you missed something. You missed the new world record and the sub 130. <laughs> that was pretty cool right now to get that because the last run I did, the last run I did, uh, yeah, the last one I did was uh, killed by the super minion in some uh, very weird way. And this run, finally, I got it. I got the sub 